Howdy sketchies, it's Megan of Hello North and I just got finished with my first comic book convention and I really want to share some tips and tricks that I learned this weekend. So let's go. So first off, oh my gosh, comic book conventions are amazing. I had always gone to the ones here in Albuquerque, but I had never actually been a vendor at one. And this last year I decided to take the plunge feet first and I got a table before I really had any, well I already had products, but I didn't have anything like physical to put out on my table. And it, it was probably the best thing that I've ever done. I absolutely had a blast. I loved it. Um, so for the people of Albuquerque Comic Con, you guys are amazing. They're so like laid back and chill and the staff and the volunteers were amazing. So kudos to you guys for putting on another amazing comic book convention. I've got a few tips and things that I learned from the convention and before the convention and I really want to share them because some of them I haven't really seen anywhere else and then some of them I just I don't think a lot of people even thought about it. I would have to say one tip is to get to know your neighbors around you because you're probably going to see them if you go to the same convention each year um, multiple times and it's going to be awesome. It's going to be nice to see them and um, talk to them. You kind of pick their brain a little bit and believe it or not vendors are going to be probably a, a really big part of your sales because they get to see you all weekend or all week depending on what kind of convention or fair you're at um, and it, it's just a really great way to have community so definitely be nice to your neighbors and get to know them a little bit number two I would definitely don't be, don't have an ego um, because there was a lot of artists there who, they were amazing, don't get me wrong, they were amazing. But then there was like one or two um, other vendors there who kind like their art was amazing. It was beautiful, it was eye-catching, and they had an ego. And I, I really hated that because, um, for example, um, there was an artist that I was, when I was walking around, when I had a little bit of time, who their artwork was amazing and I really wanted to purchase some artwork. And so did three other customers. And she, they, were, they were talking to their neighbor about comics and they didn't even acknowledge any of us that we were standing there. The other, there's two of them who had been standing there for a while and they just flat out ignored. And it irritated me to the point that when I walked away because I was like, I've got to get back to my table, I actually ripped up their business card because quite frankly, if they don't have time to actually meet with their customers or pay attention to what's going on, then chances are I don't want to collab with them and quite possibly I don't want to purchase their artwork, how awesome it is because when you purchase artwork, you're purchasing the artist. You're not just purchasing their artwork. So definitely do not have an ego. I don't care how awesome of an artist you are. The fact that people want to buy your art, you should be humbled by it. So don't get an ego and try and stay away from people who also have an ego. So tip number three, when you're trying to do your booth for cheap, check out home decor stores. You can get things like this for super cheap. I think we got these for 10 bucks and then this one was half off and this stand that I use for all of my prints is actually a um, sewing thread stand these little dowels come out and it stands up really nice Let me get a side shot here but it stands up really nice and these are only $14 and we got we stood in line with each one with one and we got 40% off so we got two of them for like seven bucks yeah that sounds right and they're way cheaper than getting those really big stands and then you can move the dowels around to the size that you want so my favorite thing that I got for uber cheap was my banner 
and it's actually an old projector screen that I picked up at a thrift store for four bucks. And then I changed the canvas on it and painted on it, so it looks really awesome. So another thing that is really good, and it's gonna be tip number four, is whenever you have your booth, make sure that you have a variety of prices so that way even the smallest of people can purchase something because if all you have is just a lot of really expensive stuff, it's gonna be a lot harder for um, people to purchase a lot of stuff and those small add-on items actually add up. So I would suggest having things that are cheap, like 50 cents to $20, $10, and have a little bit of variety. You don't want to go overboard with variety at your booth because then it'll just look like a mishmash of stuff. Try and keep it to where it's, you've got a little few things. That way if somebody doesn't have a whole lot to spend, they can feel like they really got part of the Comic-Con experience by just getting out a few things. The last thing that I know about it, and lots of people say it, but I'm gonna say it again, take a buddy. Just if it's a friend, a family member, I took Mr. Hubby. A lot of conventions, when they sell their artist alley tables or even their vendor tables, they normally say two tickets plus table. And that is for a reason, because if you're sitting there for anywhere from eight to 10 hours at a convention, you're gonna have to go pee, you're gonna have to go get a drink of water, you're gonna have to go eat, heck, you might even wanna go walk around a little bit. And if you have a friend, buddy, husband, wife, they're with you, they're, it's gonna be a little bit more relaxed. Say, hey, it comes with a ticket, you'll get to get in for like the three or four or one day, and you can go enjoy it anytime you want, just please be there so I can go to the bathroom. So definitely take a buddy, plus then they get to talk with you all day. So I had so much fun at my comic book convention and I hope that these tips helped out a little bit. I am going to like gush over some of the things that I got. So I guess it's kind of like a haul video as well. Just a few artists that um, I either made trades with or I purchased some artwork from because they were just so awesome. Um, but first off, I kind of want to do a little bit of a shout out to an artist named David. He was so amazing. He was one of my neighboring vendors. He was, he's definitely a veteran of um, comic book conventions. He's actually an illustrator for comic books and his stuff is amazing. And he was just so nice and laid back and chill. And I just really appreciate the fact that he kind of went out of his way to like answer some newbie questions and just kind of, you know, talk to me every once in a while. It really made my comic book convention um, experience definitely a little bit less stressful and it made me feel really awesome that I got to talk with somebody who has a lot of experience doing that and just experience as an illustrator so thank you David for being just awesome all right so let's do some haul stuff so first off I got I got some stickers too but I kind of already used them on like everything but there was an artist there who had mystery bags and I got this super cute um, lanyard. It's a Pokemon lanyard and I actually used it for my convention pass because the ones that they had were kind of meh. And then there was a bookmark and it's holographic shiny, but I really love the idea of mystery bags. I do mystery bags myself um, just because it's a fun way to get rid of older stuff um, that's not moving as quickly. And plus, who doesn't like a blind bag or a blind box or mystery boxes? So it could be anything. It could be a boat. So next up is this adorable Barb from Stranger Things. I love Stranger Things. I binge watched it like the weekend that it um, came out on Netflix. And the actress was actually there. I didn't get a chance to meet her, have her sign anything because I was so busy. But this is done by KP Comics. Um, Christine, all of her artwork is so cute. It's so it, it, it was one of the booths that when I walked by it, I was like, I gotta get something from that. Um, she does custom pet portraits, I believe, as well. I'm gonna put a link to all of her information down below because, oh my God, it's so cute. Okay, so the next thing that I got, I kind of fangirled out a little bit over an illustrator and I 
don't know if they understood kind of that I was fangirling, but here in New Mexico, in Santa Fe, we have something called Meow Wolf. I'll put a link, little like tag information thing up there for one of the videos that I did of my experience at a Meow Wolf event. It's like an acid trip for artists. It's amazing, I love it. But they have this room that Nico did and it's all black and white illustrations. You can see some of it in the video. And he was there and when I found out that he had a booth, like, oh my gosh, I was like, I gotta go down there. I've got to go and see all this cool stuff. And he had these little, he called them coloring books, but I don't know if that's what they really are, but they are amazing. His art style is so awesome. He actually has a clothing line called Future Fantasy Delight, which I'll put a link down below. And his stuff is just so, I mean, it's awesome. It's kind of like, um, MS Paint meets anime meets a trip. It's, it's, I love his stuff. And so when I got to meet him, I was just like, <gasps> shake my hand. It was, it was definitely a fangirl moment for me. I don't really fangirl out over actors, but illustrators and artists. I just, oh, it's so awesome to meet other people. So this was one of my pickups. I love it. I love art books because it's a great way to kind of have um, a bunch of art in one place. So last is some of David's work, which all of his stuff will be linked down below. And I am a sucker for original artwork. Um, this is Elvira and it was from his Inktober. And I just, I really, really like Inktober and I love just the simplicity and the fact that it's really quickly done. And he had a lot of awesome work down there. And then the last one, also from David is Darkwing Duck. I grew up in the 90s, like I actually grew up in the 90s, born before 1990, and I love this show. I have a bunch of PC games of Darkwing Duck. I can't play them because they're like on floppy disks, but I really, really love Darkwing Duck. And so when I saw this, I had to have it. I have no clue where I'm going to be putting all of my art. I need a bigger office. So I hope that you guys enjoyed my experiences at Comic-Con and my tips and some of my art hauls. I'll be doing some, um, I've got some photos from cosplay, from all the amazing people who were cosplaying and they're rolling right here. But if you want me to do more, I kind of want to do a series on preparing for comic book conventions, um, like marketing 101 a little bit. Um, how to do vendor, how to deal with unruly customers, that sort of thing, because I feel like it's very important. So I really want to do a series. If you're interested in me doing a series, put a comment down below of the topic that you would like me to cover about comic book conventions or craft fairs and things like that. I, I really would love to do something in that realm. Until next time, guys, keep on sketching.